we have a, uh, an old drug with maybe some new indications coming along. We have at least a beginning of the investigation for ruxolitinib, and uh, this is a multi-institutional phase one trial of this drug in chronic myelomonocytic leukemia, or CMML. I'm with Dr. Eric Padron, who is of uh, Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida, and an assistant member there. First, some background. Let's talk a little bit about CMML and this particular JAK-1-2 inhibitor, which should sound familiar to many people. Right. Well, CMML is a um, disease which for a long time actually was considered a subtype of myelodysplastic syndromes, up until about 2008. And so, even though there are FDA-approved agents for CMML, those were done in the context of its designation under MDS. And really, we don't know of any drug that can alter the natural history of CMML. Moreover, it's a very aggressive disease with the overall survival estimated to be about 34 months. And so it's a real unmet need. And so um, this phase one trial is, is hopefully the start of addressing that. So you actually started at your institution and then rolled out across a few others. Can you talk a little bit about the patients you were looking at specifically? Right. So um, really the inclusion criteria were um, quite straightforward. It's essentially you have to have a WHO defined diagnosis of CMML. Um, you could have had therapy or not. Um, and you had to, because of the previous history with ruxolitinib and hematologic toxicity, have some hematologic inclu inclusion criteria which were essentially a platelet count of 35,000 or more, uh, as well as an ANC of 250 or more. But outside of that, every CMML patient was included. So in terms of what did you find, I mean, it's phase one, but still, what did you find in this particular study? Well, a couple of things. I think the first thing we found was that it's safe in CMML. Uh, which was the goal of the phase one study. And so um, we tried doses ranging from 5 milligrams BID to 20 milligrams BID and essentially found no um, uh, dosalimine toxicity. So our phase two recommended dose is tw 20 milligrams BID. So that's the first thing. The second thing we found is that there seems to be broad range activity, at least preliminarily. Um, so in our study, nine patients had um, spinomegaly. Five of those had uh, greater than 50% reduction by physical exam. Um, we also had hematologic improvements. We had two patients with improvements in their platelet count um, measured by the MDS IWG criteria and one with an erythroid response. Uh, and lastly, something that I actually wasn't, um, didn't appreciate as much as probably I should have is the symptom burden associated with patients who have CMML. And we did see in a preliminary analysis a dramatic improvement in symptoms similar to that seen in myelofibrosis, which is the FDA approved indication. Wow, and you said safety was good. Right. Well, I mean, in, in the context of hematologic toxicities, it was very safe, safe and we really had no dose living toxicities outside uh, of that either. I mean, with this kind of a promising phase one result, what, what are you doing next? Well, the first step is we're doing um, a phase two study um, to validate our efficacy findings. Um, and then, of course, the phase one study did have interesting biologic correlates. For instance, we looked at um, mutational allelic burden before and after treatment. We looked at uh, cytokine um, uh, uh, levels across a broad range of inflammatory cytokines before and after treatment. Um, and we looked at pharmacodynamic markers as well. So uh, another thing that we're really interested in doing is asking the question, are there a subset of patients that we can identify who have CMML who would particularly benefit from ruxolitinib? So are you looking for people to enroll? Absolutely. Um, How so, about centers to enroll patients? Right, so it's open um, at uh, several centers across the country. Um, so Moffitt Cancer Center, um, uh, Johns Hopkins, uh, Dana-Farber, Cleveland Clinic, um, and uh, probably missing one. But um, it, it's open across, across the country. It is a relatively rare disease, so the incidence is 0.4 per 100,000. So That's why I figured you'd want to, to spread out and get as many people exactly. in as possible. Exactly. And, and so, um, yeah, so that, that will be a challenge. But I think based on our history in phase one, we'll be able to enroll uh, relatively quickly. Well, congratulations. This really sounds exciting. And we expect we'll probably find you back here again maybe in a year or two. I hope so. For Ash Clinical News, we are here in Chicago.